Hi everyone, Michael Wilshinovich here from VibrantShot.com. Today we're going to cover a quick tutorial on how to create your own bokeh effects. So rather than go online and try and find an image that, uh, that has some bokeh in it and then trying to apply it to your own image, uh, we're basically going to just create that effect from scratch. So uh, we have this image here and let's say we want to apply some sort of uh, stylized uh, bokeh pattern in the background here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new layer and then we're going to fill that uh, that layer with black. So as long as you've got black selected as your background color, you're going to click Control Delete or Command Delete on Mac. That's going to give us uh, a blank layer to work with. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the brush panel. So in this case, I've got mine uh, sort of as a pop out here, but you can go into Window and Brush, and that will show you the details. So you're going to select uh, first off, um, you know, sort of a, a semi-hard edged brush here. And then uh, the size, of course, will vary depending on the size of your image. So right now I've chosen a, a small image so that we can make this tutorial uh, run smoothly. But um, this image is about 1,000 pixels in height, and I've got uh, 20 pixel size on my brush. So um, it's just a matter of experimenting a little bit. But uh, you generally want to start with a fairly small brush because uh, that bokeh pattern, what we're gonna, the, the effect we're going to apply to it, is actually going to make the bokeh uh, much bigger than the original brush size. So. Uh, again, you'll have to experiment a little bit with it, but um, this is my starting point here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the brush settings. We've got to set up a couple of things here. So first of all, in uh, in the brush shape, we have to apply a spacing. So in this case, I've applied 414%. Um, so around 400% is basically what you want. Um, so you get this sort of spacing pattern over here where um, you can sort of imagine that you have about three times the space of the brush size um, in between. So we get something like that. Um, next thing we want to do is we want to take down the roundness a little bit, so around 90% or so. Um, hardness, we're going to take up to 100. Then you want to check off this Shape Dynamics option. So in Shape Dynamics, um, I've modified the size jitter, which basically just kind of uh, allows the, the size of the dots to vary as we uh, kind of brush through. Um, minimum diameter, you don't really have to set that one. Angle jitter just allows us to kind of vary the, the direction of these ovals. And then roundness jitter again will we'll sort of go from a, a round shape to a more oval type shape as we uh, apply uh, our brush. Next thing we're going to look at is color dynamics, so make sure that's checked off and um, we can apply some hue jitter, saturation jitter, and brightness jitter to that, which basically gives us this sort of varied color that you see here. Um, so rather than have pure white, uh, we're just going to kind of bounce around as far as the colors go. And of course, um, you can start with any um, color that you want uh, to, have, to have your bokeh. Uh, in this case, I'm just starting with white, and as we can see, you know, we'll, we'll sort of transition between a variety of lighter colors. Um, transfer over here, um, you can play with um, some opacity jitter as well. This one's not required. Um, in this case, I'm actually going to uncheck it. Uh, I do like to throw a little bit of noise in there as well, just to make it a little bit grainier to start. And then wet edges just gives it this, uh, this sort of, you know, inner, um, sort of darker inside and then lighter edge, which. Uh, just makes it feel a little bit more natural once we blow it up. So once we've got our brush setting set, again, just kind of you know run the brush across your canvas and just make sure that the spacing is uh, is pretty good. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go back and space this up just a little bit more. So now that we've got our brush uh, preset set, the next thing we can do is actually apply um, some dots onto the canvas to, to sort of simulate our, our light source uh, that we're going to turn into a bokeh effect. So you can of course do that just by kind of painting on, um, which is fine. What I actually like to do though, is uh, to go into the shape tool, and then pick this um, sort of hatch checkerboard style shape. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we've got paths selected. So we're not creating a shape, we're creating a path. And then what we can basically do is we can drag this, um, this sort of hatch over here. And uh, once we've got that hatch, we're actually going to paint our dots all around that hatch. And again, you can use any shape you want. I mean, if you want to, um, you know, create uh, an arrow shape or a lightning bolt shape, you can obviously do that. Um, and of course, you can, you can draw out your own shapes as well. So you can simply use a pen tool and draw out um, the specific shape that you want your bokeh to, to take on. So once we've got this path here, I'm just going to go into my paths panel. If you don't see that, again, just go into window and paths and make sure that that's selected. So. Um, just verify that that's there. And what we can do is we can just select our um, path selection tool and right click on our path and we're going to select stroke path. And just make sure brush is selected and click OK. And we're going to see that that uh, is going to fill 
our, uh, our path with those dots. So now we can delete that path, go back to our layers panel, and uh, we are going to select filter, blur, tilt, shift. So now um, be aware that uh, I believe the tilt shift filter is only available in, uh, in Photoshop CS6. So uh, you will need CS6 in order to make this work. So as you notice, what I just did there was um, I moved this inner portion here because essentially what tilt shift blur does is it's, you know, it's blurring sort of certain points um, above or below this line. So what we want to do is we actually want to blur the whole thing. I'm just going to take this, move it upwards just so that we kind of get out of the way so everything gets blurred. And then we're going to be playing around with some of these values over here. So we've got this light bokeh. So I'm going to just take this up to 50% as a starting point. We're going to take our light range and we're going to increase it quite a bit. And that's basically just going to brighten things up. And then we are going to increase our blur um, gradually until, uh, until we're happy. So maybe somewhere in or around um, 50 pixels in this case should be pretty good. That looks about what I'd like it to be. And then we're going to again brighten this whole thing just by taking our light range up a little bit more. And just increase light bokeh a little bit. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to click OK. That is going to create that sort of bokeh effect for us. <laughs> Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take uh, our layer to a screen blend mode. You can either do screen or linear dodge. Um, both of them work uh, pretty well. Linear dodge is usually a little bit more uh, intense, so we're just going to stick with screen in this case. Now I already have um, a selection here of, uh, of the, the person, so I'm just going to control click on my channel there, which is just my saved selection. And go back into layers, we're going to add a mask to that, and there we go. Um, essentially we've just created that bokeh pattern in the background, so we can, can drop the opacity on that a little bit if we think that that's too intense. Um, we could also apply um, sort of a, you know, a gradient down at the bottom here and make it so that it's only showing towards the top section. But essentially, uh, you know, we've applied that bokeh pattern uh, from scratch rather than, um, you know, pulling it out of an existing image. And the nice thing about that is that we can control uh, the shape of that bokeh. We see the, a little bit of that sort of hatched pattern in the background here. And uh, of course, again, you can, you know, create your own path just using the pen tool. Uh, if you want a certain squiggly line in the background, uh, you can certainly do that. So I um, hope you found that tutorial useful, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.